Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, I got a real treat for you. Oh, Kenny Brooks, man. Kenny Brooks. Now, if you're thinking Kenny Brooks, why does that name sound familiar? Well, that's the dude that got the viral YouTube video and knocking on the door. And if you haven't seen it, go Google best door-to-door salesman ever, and you'll be watching Kenny Brooks close people down, whether they like it or not. (laughs) What up, Kenny? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Dude, it, it, it's funny because way before you are here, you know, I saw that video long ass time ago. How many views do you, do you think it got collectively all over YouTube? Probably like 100 million. So, so like everybody saw you. Now, again, I wouldn't have recognized you necessarily because I, I wasn't, I wasn't really looking at your facial features on the video. I was listening to the fucking funny ass words you were right. saying to describe your product and to get people to buy your shit. Right. And that's why it says best door to door salesman ever. Here's my question. Did somebody like, did somebody like think, Hey, let's, let's capture this and put it on YouTube or, or who was filming you? Actually, <clears throat> How that story went is like I had um I I, I had not, I just I had before I even got to that neighborhood I had got kidnapped by some Indians right <laughs> and wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's funny See, hold on last time I heard this is in the green room hold on for a minute folks is someone trying to pair with my computer because I'm I keep getting a pairing request from the Vision Rooms keyboard so again. There's a code on my damn computer. Now, secondly, back back to this. We were in the green room, and I said this, and he said he was kidnapped by Indians. I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I got to hear this. Now, you were kidnapped prior to that video? Yeah, that's why, that's why I say it's like everything happened for a reason. And but, you were, for, but you were selling door-to-door. Yeah. The video ain't out yet. You're right. just out there, but you were still doing that. Right. So again, you were working for this company, knocking on doors, being funny, selling shit, making your commission, and then, and then, you got kidnapped yeah. by Indians. It, basically, it was a because like in sales, it's like competition. So I was beating like a lot of the sales. I was like the top salesperson for like six months straight. And like we have awards and stuff. Like we had salesman of the year, salesman of the week, salesman of the month. And I was like in a race to win a salesman of the week. But this one guy, his name Chris, he had went and worked the Indian reservation. He had like 34 sales that day, so he ended up beating me. So I was like, dang, if he had 34 sales in Indian, I know I'm about to write 50, you know what I mean? So I went to the Indian reservations, but I, see, he looked at the Mexican, but he really was Indian, I guess his nationality. So he was selling most of his people. I went over there, they didn't like black people, you know what I mean? So the first door I knocked on, they was tripping like, they was like, get out of here, you you know, so like- Shut up, tell I the promise, truth. No, I promise, it was like, get out of here, you know, so this- But were you on the reservation? Yeah, I was on the reservation trying to make some sales, so- it was crazy. So I ended up calling my car handler, like, which is the manager to drop me. I was like, you got to come get me. They tripping. So then he was like, all right, I'll be over there in a minute. By the time he ended up coming, like, they, like, end up chasing me down. They had, like, four wheelers, and they, like, like surrounded me, like, with, like, knives and guns. They are like, get in this truck. When this Native Pride truck pull up, I want you to get in. I was like, what? So then, like, I was about to get in because they had guns and everything. And then this unmarked police car just happened to be, like, driving through the neighborhood. And they just scattered. And then I was, like, crying, like, tripping because I thought that was about to kill me. So then anyway. They probably were. Yeah, so they had me, like, in, like, the witness protection. They was, like, asking me questions what happened. I was explaining it to them, right? So then, like, I end up, like, like. The the comp they when I when I got to the police station I like did a start and line point them out so after that like the um they released me the company picked me up and I just quit I was like I ain't doing this they almost got killed going door to door selling some cleaner I'd rather get a nine to five right so <laughs> I went back home to Detroit right because I'm from Detroit Michigan <laughs> it's so, funny it's funny that you say I'd rather get a nine to five right that this that's how my mentality was but let me tell you how it went though so I went home right when I went home. 
they send me a subpoena in the mail like a week later to go back to testify against these like people, right? So I go back. I'm like, oh, we get back at it. They flew me back to California. I'll get back there. So they had me like in a hotel, like secured off, like, you know, and I had like secret agents or like police, FBI. They was like watching me. So they came and picked me up and took me to the courtroom. I went to use the restroom. When I come out, I see like one of these Indian dudes and he looked at me. He's like, hey, you. And he pointed at me. He was like, he like was like, like he was gonna slit my throat or something. I was like, what? So I pointed, I tapped the people that was with me. I was like, y'all ain't just see what he just did. They was like, no, what happened? And then they turned, I t- he, like as soon as they turned around, he was gone. I said, you know what? I ain't got time for this. So I went and left. I ain't even, I said, I gotta use the restroom again. So I act like I went to the restroom and I just left. I went and called the company. I said, you know what? I just go to work. I, Cause I'm stranded out here. You know what I mean? So I went to work. Now, this is exactly how, how I went. So I went in the neighborhood. like. They picked me up right from the uh, courtroom and took me to go to work to go knock on some doors again. So I went from quitting to like, you know, I'd rather just duke it on out because either way it go, it, like if I would get killed, maybe I, maybe I'd rather get killed making some money. Now, you know what I mean? So I would have knocked them. So I, the first they put, because like when we go door to door, we work like rich people, neighborhoods, big houses and stuff where they ain't going to complain about money and stuff. Only thing is that you just got to be business oriented. Hey, let me ask you a question. Did you ever knock on a door and get a rich wife that was home alone wanting you to come in and give her the old crack down no <laughs> you weren't that smooth then. no I, I was smooth but i was always like i like i wasn't like on that like i was like just yeah, but they do i know a lot of door-to-door dudes yeah, over the no, years I, oh, and, I, and I and i know there's door-to-door yeah. dudes that have told me stories where they knock on doors and a, and a and a chick opens the the door in a robe yeah Oh, in, no. a, in a rich neighborhood, <laughs> and they and and they could be lying too, but right. like, but like, because I've done door to door, but you know, I've never really had that happen to me. But yeah. you've knocked on way more doors. It exactly. Never happened to you. It never happened. All right, continue. It, it probably could have happened, but I probably wasn't. See, I like I'm looking for like buying signals. Like either you buying or you lying. Or I'm flying. So if you're trying to do like seduce me and all that, I done read Forty Eight Laws of Power. I'm not even looking at none of that right now. I done, I done read the Art of Seduction. I'm looking at like, I, but I, I read like like I read stuff that where you could control the world, and I read stuff that where the world can control you. But so I'm looking at like if I do something negative, it's gonna be like a negative outlook on the company. You know what I mean? So I just like that. That's why like to me that was like negative because I it probably well, it would be negative. You yeah, can't go bang yeah, exactly. later. So that's but that's why I said like I didn't never look I never looked at it like that. But like like get back to the story. So uh they dropped me off in the neighborhood. And I knocked on this like uh he was like the Lakers doctor. I knocked on his door, then he told me like Jamie Foxx stayed across the street. So I happened to go I happened to skip all the houses of like Uno and I just ran. Where's, where's this? Calabasas? Yeah, yeah. No what you know it wasn't Calabasas, it was Tarzana. It okay. was Tarzana, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's staying like Thousand Oaks now though, but yeah, so like, so I skip like all the houses and go over there. I see like him pulling in the, um, and it's like, he had like a gate to his house. So I I'm, I run up to the gate and then like the, uh, the body, like he had like a sensor, the gate was closing, but I guess my body like made the gate open back up. So he like saw me from his rear view, like he was pulling this car. He's like, hold on. He like, he had like an intercom. He's like, hold on, what you doing? No trespassing. And I was like, COD. And he's like, all right, hold on one second. So he pulled in this garage. It did. When he pulled in the garage, he cut back like I'm on a golf cart. You know what I'm saying? I said, oh, yeah, he's hilarious. I'm about to beat the sleeves off him. That's how I'm thinking. Like, So he come out. He was like, oh, you selling something? I thought you said COD. I said, yeah, come on down. And then he started laughing. He was like, oh, not only is you funny, but you funny looking. So we just started like cracking jokes on each other for like for the first like three to five minutes. And then. I just remember he was like, boy, you got some big lips. You could, I bet you could whisper in your own ear. I said, what? <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, boy, you, all that money you got, you uh, you got some uh, little ears. You should get plastic surgery on your ears. I bet your earrings look like sugar. <laughs> so we just started going like back and forth. And then he like told me to come in. We started talking. He was telling me about how like he got adopted and he was from Texas. This is and Jamie Foxx, right? Yeah. And he told me he went, he went door to door and everything. And then so like, I just was telling him like, like my whole goal was like to be a stand up comedian and everything. So after after I left his door, I go to the next house because he bought, he like bought only two bottles. He was cheap. He just bought like two bottles. He wasn't even trying to buy. He was trying to give me a tip. I was like, even if I work for Hooters, I won't accept that tip. So I was like, but what I'm going to do is that you can give me a hundred dollars. I'm going to just give you two bottles. And then I went to the next house. When I get to the next house, that's the lady that filmed me. What happened was that when I, when I, when she opened the door, I just saw cameras. So I just start 
you know, like giving her my sales pitch. But I'm I'm thinking he caught her, you know what I mean? Because he was telling me how he went door to door and how like he like went door to door in California. He said he knocked on this one dude door because he was used to sell encyclopedias door to door. And he said this one dude didn't even buy from him. But he said, I tell you what, you funny. If you come down to this audition for a living color, I can give you auditions to be on TV. And that's how he made on living color. Just going door to door. So I'm thinking like, oh, this is my shot right here because I see a camera. I'm like, it's like it's camera action. But what come to find out, the lady stereotyped me. Look, she happened to see me through her blinds walking up to her door and she's like when i talked to her like right after the video went viral she said that her husband just bought her a camera and she said that she, her neighbor called her and said it was suspicious black guy walking in the neighborhood looked like he cased in the area so she came out with her camera in case i tried to break in a house or something so really she came out just to yeah, see. how 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 much of that do you experience in, i hear i experience that all the time like every time we get out the neighbor like i'm talking about that's why like so anybody that says racism ain't still alive is full of shit yeah but like, yeah, that's true. But I feel like I don't even look at it because I'm like from Detroit. I'd be like, even black people was racist towards their own people because we get like black on black crime all the time. So it'd be crazy. It's just that. Goddamn bomb you got right there. Yeah. That's right, dude. Yeah. So I, it's just that your perception is your reality. I, but I feel like that, like, when, when we in the, when we in the um, neighborhood. Dude, I'm telling you right there. Yeah. Folks, listen up. That I'm telling you, man. That's what he just said is the truth. And that's another thing, dude. That's how it, when I keep saying like, oh, so this. He said, I wasn't even paying attention. What about that? Oh, I wasn't even paying attention. Because, again, perspective is reality. And that's why this dude can go through a neighborhood of per perceived racism. I don't know that there is or isn't, yeah. but let's pretend there is. And not even act like there was. Like, I wasn't even paying attention. I was looking for buying signals. Right. Oh, yeah, a chick wanting to hump? I don't know. I wasn't even <laughs> looking for that. I was looking for buying signals. All right. And then he just said perception's reality. So if you're driving around in your truck and you're thinking, damn, dude, this dude's funny. Yeah, it's all fun and games when it's funny. But he also just said something that if you could master that, if anyone can just master and understand, my perception is literally the difference between pissed and happy. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Like, Someone has no money, someone has money. People right. be like, well, obviously the one with the money is happy one. Not always. Not a, exactly. Fuck yeah, dude. I know people with money all pissed off and <laughs> negative, and I know broke motherfuckers happy as shit. Right. And, it, and what's the difference? The difference is their perspective. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Right. Like, dude, quit making life harder than it is. Okay, keep going. Yeah. And that just makes me bring <clears throat> up my next story, right? Because, like, that's why I said, like, I... Like I, I've been going door to door for a minute, so like I, like I wanted to like, like tell my story. So I had wrote like a ten episode series of like, like what I've been through going door to door. Like one of them was an Indian kidnap, and the other one was like when I knocked on Jamie Foxx's door. The other one was like um, suicide that I was explaining, like in there. So explain that one. Okay, basically, um, I was in, we was in Metro, Oregon, and like. I'm from Eugene. You ever been in there? Yeah. You must have. You oh, probably yeah. went right up there. Eugene, yeah. University of Oregon. Yeah. yeah. What the about Ducks. Cottage Grove? You didn't stop. Yeah, Cottage, Cottage Grove. Grove. Yeah. CD. Hillsboro, all that. They love me out there. Like Fat Kids Low Cake. I like, yeah, Cottage Grove. I was killing them out there. So what happens? You knocked. Yeah. So anyway, we was in um, Mefford. Because Mefford, it, we, 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 what happened was that we was in um, Redding, California. And we drove like two hours. Because, you know, that's going towards Oregon. Like the, Redding is like the end of California. You know, like. It's the yeah. end, so we well, why or something? Yeah, why or all that? Yeah, well, we was work, we work all of that, but we was yeah. going towards Oregon. Well, it was like you guys Ashland just hit and city, Mefford. City, yeah, we just city, go state city. to state. Yeah, so we went to Mefford. You know what I mean? But it's like a green, like because they said it's like God's country because it's always raining and it's green. But I noticed one thing about Seattle. I mean, Washington State and Oregon, they right next door to each other. That it's like a depressed state. It's like no, they said it back in the day it was like number one for suicide. What was? Because like. Like Washington, Washington and like, yeah, because of the rain, exactly. So that day it was raining, and like, I'm be honest with you, a lot of salespeople that go door to door, they always fold, like, they turn into sugar in the rain. They don't even, they don't get a best, they just give up, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I like I was already like like my mentality just amazing like when I like when it's raining I go to I'll go I go to work even extra harder because I'm like I know they laying down today they ain't about to go to work because they looking at the rain they about to turn into the the customers they about to be like depressed like them you know what I mean so <laughs> anyway so I knocked on this lady door I promise you like. She come to the door negative, like, just, like, like straight shut me down, like, oh, whatever you selling, I don't want to get off my property, and slam the door, boom. And I was like, well, Jesus didn't sell everybody, God bless you. And then, so I'm walking off, she come back outside, like, like, expecting me to be, like, negative, you know what I mean? Because she was still negative and, like, angry. She's like, what did you say? I said, I, I just said, God bless you, man, I'm sorry, I, we just going to catch you when you're positive, but, you know, uh, we going to see you around like a donut. And then I just walked off, and then... 
she started smiling and then she was like she was like, what are you selling? And I was like, I'm just selling good looks, charm, and personality. You sharp, though, because your neighbor across the street thought I was a black Jehovah Witness. And then she just, like, while she was smiling, a tear dropped her eye. And I was like, right then and there, I just took my shoes off and put her shoes on. Then I put my shoes back on. I was like, okay, for a minute, I'm not even about to sell her because I know that she probably going through something. Yeah. And I, I remember being a new man, like, when I was new at the door-to-door -door industry, like, when the person was negative, the first thing I thought was, like, oh, they racist. But I noticed, like, if, like, if I say they racist, I'ma think I'ma run into this all day. I'ma think people racist all day. You know what I mean? Like so, like you just gotta change your thinking. And by me having experience, like I knew that like I couldn't think like that. I had to like fake it till I make it. So it's just that I had like I was just positive. I had a PMA, a positive mental attitude. So when I like sized her up, she was like, um, all right, come on in. And then um I, I walked in her house and she had like a gun on the table, like a 38 special. And I was like, I was like, oh, don't shoot. Just a chocolate kid having fun. And I was like, I ain't come to make you mad. And then, because I thought it was like a setup because she started off being real mad and arrogant and then nasty to me. And then she told me to come in. But I knew my personality broke the ice with her. So when I come in, I see a gun. I don't know this lady from, you know, a can of paint. So when I walk in there, I see the gun. She was like, no, no, no. She was like, sit down. Let me explain. She was like, I, I apologize for being real nasty, which is just that today I, was just a bad day for me. I just lost my son in a car accident. And she was like, and right before you knocked on the door, I was about to kill myself. Mm. And then right after that, she was like, <clears throat> so I just started talking to her. We just had like a friendly conversation. I was just like the whole thing in my, like sales just went right out the door. Like I noticed too, like when I'm not thinking, I tell a lot of people when I'm training them and my sales people, like when they go door to door, like even sales company, real estate, whatever. I say, when you're not even looking for a sale and you're just looking for a customer relationship, like that's when you automatically get a sale. But like when you just like trying to pressure yourself, thinking about a sale, got dollar signs in your eyes, that's when you don't get the sale because you, you know, it's 90% mental and it's 10% physical. And I knew that like in order for me to win this person over, I really had to like, like be a, a friend to this person, you know, cause she was going through it. You know what I mean? So after that, we just started talking, she hugged me and then she ended up buying like two bottles. Like, so, so didn't you heard before you said any of that right there, I was just talking to these people about building relationships and that's the new economy. You must've been thinking, yep. Cause you just said, you just said, dude, you, you see who taught you all this shit? Um, just like reading a lot of books, learning doing research, just learning, learning like and, Zig and, and Ziglar. You, I like, I, I like, and you tried it out and it works exactly. So you'd swear by it, yeah. So when you go to knock on a door, dude, yeah, of course you're there to make a sale, but you'd rather build a relationship, exactly. Yeah. That's the first thing, and that's what like I use my personality. That's what's number one thing. Like, I had this book called like the uh, Sales Bible by Jeffrey Gittimore, and he said that people buy personality before they buy merchandise. And I noticed like. Majority of my sales, I have people that like they be like, I like I knock on their door like two years later, they had dust on a the cleaner. And they're like, I ain't never even you, used you, it. Like, what, they, what's the best sales book you've had? The best sales book because yeah, like you use Jeffrey Gittimer. I know Jeffrey. Yeah, like he ain't the best salesperson. No, he ever. not the he best. He might be just, the best book writer. The, no, ever. my favorite book is like it's two of them. It's Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. That's right. And then it's uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's like my favorite book of all time because right. number one, I like. I keep I, telling all my followers, listen, all the bomb squad. Read that. Yeah. I keep telling anybody. Said, "What about a book?" I'm yeah. like, "That's the book I yeah. tell them to read." That that's 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 an amazing book because number one, like, um, like it, it just it just helps you with trial and error. Like that book, like, cause it number one, like 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 one of my favorite quotes that Dale Carnegie said. He said, "If you want to gather the honey, don't kick over the beehive." And I tell a lot of people, I be like, people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die. So I'll be like, how you want to? win or like write your quota or get a sale but you don't want to study you know and like i heard like a lot of people said if if you want to have something from a dummy put it in the book because a lot of people don't want to do their research they don't want to study they don't want to go through the proper you know procedures to be the best they can be you know what i'm saying especially when it comes to the sales field so that's what i had i had the best of both worlds because i had like a witty personality and i also like i, I was trained from ground up so i knew that like you know even a dummy know to buckle up. So I know if I wanted to get, you know, get the honey, I can't kick over the beehive. And then he also said, if you convince a man against their will to have the same opinion still, because you could be talking at a person and you won't even sell them. But when you just talking to them, you know, and you, they friend and yeah. you just, that, 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 that conversation and that, you know, that customer relationship, <laughs> it, it, it happened all the time. So it's just amazing. But like, it's funny because I done seen people that I couldn't even sell. And I had another person that go right behind me sell. Because, like, probably this day, I wasn't, like, I didn't give 
or I probably gave 110 percent, but I probably gave 150. I probably and that's what I was telling, like, because I, I learned that, like, like in the sales, like for like the industry I'm in, door to door, it was like we learned like it's four steps to a sales talk, like when like it was your approach, then you had like an introduction, then you had the demonstration, and then a close. So and then like I remember like even um, when I went and um, did spoke at um, Jonathan Dawson um, Cellology um, he had like a six figure sales contract he was talking about the micro commitment like how you commit a person like like the art it's really like the art of auto suggestion when like because I give a person a bottle and tell them like it's in good hands all state. if I give you this bottle I know you ain't about to walk in the house with my bottle you know what I mean so right then and there you are already just committed that you know you interested. You know not, I mean? not not only that, you've established trust. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. But see, yeah. but but you learned it and applied it and and did it. See, a, a lot of shit I did growing up, dude, it was a fucking accident. Like I didn't I didn't learn it. I just did it. But come to find out when I start learning, right. I'm like, oh, I do that. Oh, I do that. I just did it instinctually. Do you think there's such a thing as a natural born salesperson? A natural born. Yeah, do you think it? Because everybody says, you know, I always say they're not born, they're trained. Yeah, that's what I, I feel like they born to and they train because like, it's like, I feel like it's, it's like, because I remember like growing up, like I used to like ask my mom, can I go play with my friends? I wasn't even a salesperson. And she'd be like, no, you got to go clean your room. And then I go clean up the room and come back with a, like, I got to come back now because she gave me objection. I'm like, oh, I cleaned up my room. I did my homework. Boom, boom. Okay, you can go play with your friends. So I just convinced her. So that was like born because that was like knee high and I learned that. And then that's what I'm saying. Like I just took that like training, like what, you know what I'm saying? And then I took that and like. Applied it. Exactly. So, but I mean, for like, but I feel like where you coming from, because I feel like a lot of them, like a lot of people went through that same concept, but they don't apply that like in the sales field. Like, as far as the people that I've been around. Because, like I said, when I came in the industry, like, I was new and I was beating people that had more experience than me. Like, they was doing it for, like, years and stuff. And I was yeah, but, doubling they sales, tripling they sales and everything. Yeah, but you know why? I was hungry, number one. And number two, like... You were better. Yeah. Like, number Well, that, that's an, uh, the facts. But also because just because someone has 20 years experience doesn't mean they have 20 years experience. They could have one year experience 20 times. Right. And that's not the same. Mm -hmm. So people that are learning, seek and read and grow and apply and practice and tweak and measure and adjust and correcting, applying, practicing over and over and over. It's like wiping your ass with a hula hoop. <laughs> okay. The shit never ends, dude. It, you're doing it over and over and over and over. <laughs> not a hula hoop. And most people get all pissy about it and right. have a bad attitude about it. Oh, it's raining. Right. Okay. And that negative attitude. And that's the difference between a fucking salesman that just rocks everybody's records exactly. and someone that 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 doesn't mm -hmm. and what's cool is you can make a ton of money not doing what you do right. but when you can do what you do you make a thousand times more money and you elevate usually outside of the the industry anyway right. like dude you're gonna end up fucking with a training company you're gonna end up with freaking masterminds coaching groups probably some 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 uh sponsorship deals right like dude if i were in your shoes I'd already be making 20 times the money you are. You know why? Why? Right. Because I'd be going out there freaking creating these products based on your brand. So right. you, whether it was on purpose or not, you got a brand and, and your brand now is fucking, you know how to, you know how to sell door to door. So you know how many door to door salesmen there are in the world? Right. Have you ever spoke to D to D con with Sam Taggart? Nope. See again, dude. He just reached out to me. They got a whole said, industry. And yeah, dude, it's in Utah. He said he just like invited me to come out in January. Yeah. You say yeah, twenty five right. dimes. I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> right. You can even say it funny. <laughs> right. Like, dude, I'll tell you twenty five times if you give me twenty five dimes. <laughs> like, I'll do anything. You got. You can get your rhymes going. Like, right. dude, that's what's funny is like, dude, you can sit there and literally create fucking funny shit right. just because the way you say it is also funny. Exactly. You know, like the, I think the funniest thing you said in that viral video, folks, if you guys still don't know who the fuck this dude is, go to YouTube and Google, like open another tab, YouTube, uh, door to door. You can comedian. write Kenny Brooks, but yeah. I mean, you, you've been uploaded all kinds by different people, but the, mm -hmm. but the original one I think was called like best door to door salesman ever. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you'll see him dude. And then you click it and you listen to him and the dude just answers the door. Next thing you know, blah, 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 blah. He, he runs through his thing. 
and you got a lot of funny shit, but but the funniest thing I think was, oh my god, <laughs> who did that? <laughs> like, dude, that was fucking hilarious. Why? Because it was it was almost as natural as it gets. It's like, <laughs> you look to the right, oh my god, <laughs> right. dude, that's funny. And right. and enthusiasm sells, yes or yeah. no? Oh, that's that's like my pet peeve. I love like that. That's it definitely sells. Okay, and, so, and when everything else fails, enthusiasm sells. I promise you. Yeah. So again, like, so ultimately, you read a bunch of books before you got in that ability. Like, said it again. You read a bunch of books, right? Yeah. You've been reading books, yeah. And you're prepared. I got and, like and, twenty and, books in my bag right now. That's what I was like, like, cause I like, I'm. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create a course where, like, I can like, like, just you, you know give what you're people. allowed to do. What you're allowed to create a course that spills your knowledge, even if it's someone else's. Right. So like, in other, in other words, if you go and say word for word, how to win friends and influence people, mm -hmm. that's called plagi plagiarism. Right. But if you talk about how those principles mm -hmm. help you, right. And you kind of base your training on the fact that, Hey, I've learned this, from, from this that. book yeah exactly dude your your course becomes even better than that book why because you're adding to it with experience and with role playing with practice and and you're delivering it in your own way and at the end of the day people are going to buy your training because it's you right and then if it's good or not is if it works for them mm -hmm. and no matter what you do no matter what courses you create somebody's going to buy it and say it didn't work why because <laughs> they don't right People always ask me, you know, because I, I have a couple friends in MLM marketing. They're always like, hey, is this real? Does that work? I'm like, it only works if you do. <laughs> That's a good one. You know, does door-to-door <laughs> right. -door sales work? Only if you do, dog. <laughs> right, right. If you don't work, it don't work. Exactly. But, but You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. Yeah, so. but dude, like it's it's like when you look at freaking all buff movie stars and shit and in their movies, they got the six pack and they're getting all the girls <laughs> and you're like, damn, them lucky motherfuckers. Right. No, dude, what you don't see is the two hours in the gym. You yeah. don't see them fucking eating a cracker instead of a fucking, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwich with right. a glass of cold milk watching TV in the morning. Right. They don't have all that shit. They're making sacrifices. All you see is the movie where they look good. They're yeah. getting all the you ladies. Don't the the you don't see the behind You don't see the pain. You yeah. don't see the work. Yeah. So when I see this video, oh, you just see some funny dude closing deals with all these slick lines. Well, what, what you don't see is all the books he read. You've been reading books before that, right? I to be honest with you, like, are you just starting to figure that out? No, I, when I when I became when I was a new person, I started reading all of these books, like. Yeah. Because you were smarter than me, dude. You know how long yeah. it took me to actually start reading books? Fuck, I just started reading like last week. <laughs> you funny. <laughs> I'm serious. It's like fucking book. I would learn everything right. the hard way, dude. My book's almost done. It's called The Hard Way. For real. It's shit I learned the hard way so you don't right. have to. Right. I got three books coming out in total. That one's going to be that. I'm going to do one zero to light speed, but this place has to be a billion before I can do it. Right. But once it hits a billion, I'm going to write a book about how I went from fucking the jailhouse to the motherfucking penthouse. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's the story of light speed. And then the third book, Living with a Large Penis. <laughs> Dude, I got to explain to people. Like, first of all, you know, everybody wants a bigger dick. Not, nah, you, no, you don't. Trust me. Be happy with what you got. All right. They're not fucking fun. Right. They're fun to show, I got to say. But they're not fun when girls will say, no way. Trust me. Be happy with what you got, fellas. All but right. So those are the three books we got coming out. You got a book coming out? No, I'm see again dude I'm, you need to write a book yeah you need not not to write just a tv show don't you have like you said you're writing episodes yeah so you want to make tv shows that's like a book right but dude a book is a calling card so you should write a book mm -hmm. you, you should definitely organize your your knowledge into a course right. your courses because if you just went over and over and over and over and over with somebody dude they will get good like you right and and there's companies that if they could make a whole fucking team of kenny brooks dude they'd pay you a fuckload of money to do that right but you know what they don't know they don't have your pma they don't realize it's not sales training it's called fucking life training it's yeah. called it's it's like parenting it's like yeah it's like dude how come some people's grand uh, parents raised them better right my parents didn't raise me very well compared to like I call them beaver cleaver families. But then again, my dad taught me how to survive. You Is know how? How? By leaving me alone. <laughs> yeah. Everyone be like, oh, poor Brad. Fuck you, dude. I'm right. a survivor now. Exactly. He, he taught me how to get shit handled. Yeah. 
You know, I dropped out of school at 16. Everyone's like, oh, poor Brad. Fuck you, dude. You went to college and got lied to. Right. I went out and got hit in the face with real life examples. Now I'm <laughs> fucking rich and you're working for me with your fucking master's degree. <laughs> Why? Right. Well, because college doesn't teach you real world shit. Amen. That's true. See what I'm saying? Now let's yeah. let's see what my wife has to say. Hello, babe. You're on dropping bombs. Oh, hello. Why are you calling me in the middle of the day? Oh, it's 510. Shit, I should be home by now, right, honey? <laughs> yep. Hey, listen, where's my manners? <laughs> I'm dropping bombs. Babe, I'm doing dropping bombs. What's up? Okay. I just let you know we're going to the mall. What mall? Fashion show. You got my credit card? <laughs> no, I do not. Okay, then you can go. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. I'll call you right. shortly. See, so dude, like, again, most people wouldn't answer a call on a po- motherfucking podcast. You know why I do? Wow. Because that's why people listen to this podcast, because it's real shit. Exactly. And they're, and right now, they're right. like, if you said, dude, tell me how to, what would you do if I were you? I would tell you what I would do if I were you. It would help you, and it would help a bunch of listeners that might be in the same position you're in. Like, dude, what do I do to scale? Like, dude, you gotta, you've built a brand, whether it's on purpose or not, it doesn't matter. You got a brand. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta maximize that brand, and and create products that are valuable based on your brand. Right. Like if you tried to come here and say, dude, I'm gonna teach a, I'm gonna come in here and teach your employees, um, you know, editing. I'd be like, oh, you know how to edit? <laughs> like that's not, that's not on brand. Right. I may, I, I may do it, but like it's a harder sell. If you came in and said, dude, what if I could get all your people? Fucking selling like I was doing here and there and there and there and there. I'd be like, boom, that's on brand. How much is that? Right. Then like a day, let's say five grand, ten grand. It's a day. You, I want you to come do my event, speak like Jonathan Dawson. They'll pay you ten to twenty five grand. Right. People pay me twenty five grand. They go, how much? The first time someone wanted me to speak, they said, hey, how much you charge to speak? I oh, I never spoke. <laughs> but they said, how much do I charge? So I said, twenty five thousand one hour. And they said, okay. Wrote me a check, and I'm like, damn, I should have said 50. <laughs> right. But anyway, so I just said 25 grand, so they wrote it. Dude, people will hire you to speak. That suicide story put into a one-hour keynote. You go do those keynotes, right, right, for sales teams and organizations. They'll pay you. You make good money just doing keynotes. Right. But the keynotes, if you're smart, you do the keynotes, and then everyone goes, damn, dude, I want to go deeper with this dude. What else you got? Well, I got a book. I got coaching, I got training, you got real money, I got high level consulting. Like, what do you mean? Like, where, give me 50 grand, you come out to my house in Calabasas, I live next to Jamie now, <laughs> and, and you know, we spend three days and I, and I break down your whole organization, right. and then I custom develop a training curriculum and, and, and a script for your salespeople. So I basically write your jokes. There'll be motherfuckers writing you 50 grand checks. For two days. But see, you got you to, number one, uh, create that and price it, structure it, and plan it. That's a strategy. Right. And if you, don't ha- if you don't know to do that, you'll, you'll never do it. Right. But, dude, that's what these people are doing. Like, I can take Jamie Foxx and show him how to make a 10-figure-a-year 10, 10 consulting business. Why? Because he's Jamie fucking Foxx. Right. Kevin Hart. Doesn't matter. Right. Brad Pitt. <laughs> Fucking Steven Spielberg, right. Warren Buffett. Right. So, you, well, they got a brand. What would you think Warren Bruff, Buffett could teach you? Tell me you know who Warren motherfucking yeah. Buffett is. How to be a billionaire. Or how to invest. Yeah. He's an investor. He's an investor, yeah. yeah. So, again, he if he- got a railroad he, company. He got a lot of stuff. Dude, like he's an Pamper investor. Pamper Chef. Yeah. He, yeah. But, but, but again, doesn't mean he knows how to be a chef just because he owns <laughs> yeah, Pamper he just, Chef. Yeah. He knows how to invest. He's mm-hmm. an investor. So if there was a course from Warren Buffett on how to invest, right, I'd buy the motherfucker, wouldn't you? Is that, yeah, of course. Right, but if there was a course on, you know, you know, uh, sailing with Warren Buffett, <laughs> you'd be like, oh, I didn't know that motherfucker sailed. <laughs> right. So, dude, you got a brand right. right now. Fucking use it. Got to. And if you don't know how... Offline, you motherfucking just ask old BL. I'll help you out. <laughs> right. he, he he knows some shit too. He he right. he old slicky over here. He's <laughs> right. been he's been r- running game for years too. Right. 
So uh, that's good news. So so when you got fucking kidnapped, you didn't actually get like kidnapped and held for ransom. You just got held up at yeah. gunpoint right. and damn near killed. Mm -hmm. So you ever been back on a reservation? Oh no. No, I didn't know. It, I didn't know Native American Indians were 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 against black people. Yeah, I think they, they're just against yeah. door to door sales. That's people. what I thought it was too. But they, this one guy had like thirty four sales over there. Yeah, but, but he was an Indian. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, he got away with it. <laughs> right, know? right. And not only that, how do you know that he wasn't fucking from the reservation? Maybe that was his house. Did you have all the data? No, we we came into business together. Like we so both he just was a new. random yeah, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like man, that was like my competition because we used to beat each other every day. That day he got me and he told me he worked in the rest. So I said, oh, I'm about to go exactly where you went to. You know? Did he say fucking? You better not. He no, nah, he was laughing though. So like when I came in, they thought I got kidnapped. He was like, what? It was crazy though. So so after that, you you went to the court and then you got out of court and that's when the lady filmed. You did buy, sell them the, the bottles, yeah. Yeah, and she only what? bought one bottle. But, like, yeah, she, like, they filmed me, and then, like, right after that, like. Did you say give me that film, or did they upload it? No, she did. But, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't find out it went viral to, like, a year later. Be what's crazy is that I was knocking on people's doors after that, like, probably two, three weeks later. And they like, oh, my God, I just saw you on f f um, YouTube. Like, you the funny daughter. I'm like, and I was just, like, I was just happy because I was like, oh, this is an easy sell. So I didn't think nothing about, like, this is a viral video. I'm like, oh, yeah, I ain't got to do it. I ain't got to do my job. Oh, just come, come here. I get a picture. They take a picture. Of, it's a year that you're on YouTube. Yeah, you're like, you like, I sure but, am. Yeah. <laughs> you want two bottles or four? Yeah, that's exactly it. So I was just getting sales like that. And then, like, come to find out, like, um, like, ridiculousness and like all these like like ellen degeneres all them reached out to her because i didn't have like an to email the lady with the email yeah i she, mean with the youtube yeah because she had like her link and everything in it but she already had copyrighted the video and everything so what happened was that how i found out she was making money and like monetizing everything is that like i like um ridiculousness and them reached out because they wanted to share my video on their show so i reached back out to her i was like why you ain't tell me all these people kind of get contact with me then that's when she started sending me the information it was too late so then i was like i'm about to get a lawyer and stuff and then she just ended up getting mad tomorrow she copyrighted the video i'm about to just take it down and so Dude, she it, it, i know but it, like again it ain't your video it's her video yeah yeah so so what all all i you can tell her like if i were her i would have been smarter and i would have I would have said the same thing about the damn video because I own that. I right. took it. It's mine. All right. But they don't want the video. They want the dude in the video. Yeah. So at the end of the day, they don't want, what's her name? All right. What's her name? Um, Sabrina Morgan or something like that. Exactly. Like, and I and, and, and want to know their name because nobody gives a fuck who took the video. All right. I don't even know why I asked that. I asked it because I know you weren't in it. So yeah. I'm wondering, I wonder, was that staged? Was yeah. that planned? Like, did you walk up to that door saying hey let's take this no, video and then put it up on youtube yeah so I, you answered my question but at the end of the day that's why i asked that right but no one gives a fuck who who filmed it right ellen wasn't reaching out because they they were thinking oh my god the the filming of this was amazing i need to <laughs> i need to find out who filmed this right they were thinking who's that dude yeah. so they were calling her because she technically owns the video right and she still does and you don't got no rights to it it's her damn video but how is she making money because of that video? Well, YouTube advertising dollars. Well, yeah. dude, those are hers, bro. Yeah. You just happen to be the star. Right, right. So now, so now, if I were her, guess what I'd have done? After Ellen and Deer Deck and these people were calling me looking for you, I would have reached out and I'd have said, what's up, dog? You got a manager? <laughs> and you would have said no. And I would have said, hey, let me be your manager. All right. And then I would have said, okay, Deer Deck, I'll get him on the phone. What you need him for? <laughs> and old dear Dick would say, "Well, I want to see him come over here and da da da." Okay, well, he charges twenty five thousand for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just, dude. Listen, right now there's dudes winning millions playing games. You heard of esports, right? Right. So there's there's kids where we used to say, "Fuck off the games all day." You can't fucking. You, you're never gonna make a living doing that. Well, now they are. Right. Those kids are gonna be celebrities. Think about it. When poker players, when poker was getting big, poker players, good poker players, online poker players, live poker players, Daniel Negreanu, all the poker players, top poker players. Somebody was smart enough. I know the dude. He said, these guys are going to get fucking famous <laughs> because of the TV coverage. All right. So this lawyer went to these poker players who were just fucking poker players. There were nobody. They were just good poker players. He said, hey, why don't I represent you? 
They're like, what? And they, sure enough, everyone came to wear their shirts, wear their brands, shit like this happening to you. But this lawyer was smart enough to sign them all. So now they went to this guy to get all the deals from those guys. That's what I would done if I were her. And then they also did it. They're, they're, they're going to be able to do that right now with these kids on the, on the fucking games. Like, dude, you got to go approach those dudes winning these tournaments and sign them with a contract and say, I want to represent you. And then when they sign your contract, they're basically saying they, they get 10, you get 10%. Right. And then everybody that reaches out, dude, you get 10%. Right. Oh, you want to talk to Kenny Brooks? Shit, I know how to get a hold of him. What you need, dog? What you need? <laughs> right. What you need him for? I'll help you out. What right. you need? Right. That's that's what I would do if I was hurt, is I would have reached out to you and said, dude, let me manage you. But what do you, again, you said you're about to lawyer up for what? What'd she do to you? Why would you need a lawyer? Hmm. Because, like, I feel like she just, like, she made money, like, off, so, like, off so, of my image, though. Like, so? What? I mean, like, I mean, that's she got lucky. Yeah, that's what she 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 filmed the right thing, dude. Just like if I walk by a room and I seen Jennifer Lopez and a rod in the room humping and then a rod killer. Dude, that's my fucking video. I go sell that. That's, I own that shit. They can't be mad because I made money on them. Look at look at old look at old Ray J and Kim. Somebody somebody took that video. Someone owns that video. It could be Ray J and Kim right. that's getting paid because they released it on purpose. You never know. Mm. Rumor is they had, they did. But point point I'm making is, dude, sh- that's her video. What are you going to sue her for? Because right. she made money? So what? Now what? You're right. Yeah, so <laughs> dude, you're wasting your money on a lawyer because that's just like whatever. Now the right. question is, is, how do you make money because she did what she did? She got hers. How you get yours? <laughs> It, it, dude, sh- by the way, you better be thankful she did what she did because right. cause now you do have a brand. She made you, dude. Even though you made yourself, that fucking viral video made your brand or kickstarted it because you're going to make it from here on out. Right. But it kickstarted it, dude. So if she didn't do that, you'd be, you'd be fucking door to door, knocking on doors. <laughs> fucking, you may have never been fucking discovered. Now, again, you might have been discovered three doors down the road too. Right. someone else fucking did it right or you might have thought of it like god damn it because dude if people are strategic right now dude they can go make viral videos on purpose i can go make a viral video on purpose right you just have to have all the elements of a viral video and have really good acting i mean i know people that have viral videos that were staged a hundred percent <laughs> so, so that means you can you can make them, right? But see, what well, the re, the reason that made yours value, valuable, dude, and viral is because of you. See, your 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 lines, your skill set. So when Ellen reached out, she wants you to probably get on her show. Have you reached out back out, or is it like, oh, it's been too long? Ellen don't give a fuck no more. <clears throat> it might be that, which means what. Well, now we better figure out how to leverage the brand that you already got. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just doing like new, like new content and like just trying to, like I, I'm interacting with like a lot of people because like I had like a lot of emails with like people's like offering me TV shows and everything, but like I just had like the right management and like like I couldn't. TV shows, dude. That's acting or a reality show. Yeah, it was both. I had like like this guy from um, he just responded today. Like he like. He 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 got he he was developing a show called A Guy That Can Sell Anything, but he said that uh, Fuse, F U S E, the TV show, they the network was gonna pick it up. So he was flying me out to L A to do like a sizzle, and then like another, a couple of other TV shows, like they was reaching out. They was like just trying to develop me my own show, like basically. So do they got it? So who would own the show? It would be my show. Well, be careful. I'm just saying, don't let it, don't let the old girl dick you again. <laughs> <laughs> you go get your own show, and all of a sudden, figure out Fuse owns it. You ain't getting <laughs> right, nothing, right? Right? right. <laughs> go, Kenny ain't getting right. nothing twice. Hey, just like uh, you know the dude that owned Apple that lives out here in Perron. Apple what? Apple, motherfucker. Steve Jobs. Yeah, Apple. Yeah. Like, you don't you hear the story? He from here? I thought he was like. No, dude. Steve Jobs is dead. First right. of all. But Steve Jobs 
and Wozniak, and there was a third person. You know his name? Uh-uh. Not many do. All right. But there was a third person that owned basically enough stock of Apple to be worth billions of dollars. But he didn't like what Steve was doing and said, hey, just buy me out and sold his shares for like, you know, what he invested and a little more, not much, like 15 grand, let's say. He sold them and said, I don't, I don't want to be with Apple. It's not going to go anywhere. So he sold out. And then fucking obviously Apple turned into Apple. That's the first time he dicked himself. But then a reporter went to his house in Pahrump. He lives in Pahrump. He went to his house in Pahrump to talk about, like, oh, my God, dude. Do you realize you fucking <laughs> you got out of a trillion-dollar company? Right. And he's like, yeah, whatever, whatever. And so he showed the reporter the contract for the shares signed by all the people. In other words, he showed him the original contract and issued of shares originally. And the reporter said, man, I sure would like to have those. And the guy's like, are you fucking crazy? I'm not an idiot. I want a thousand bucks for him. So the reporter gave him a thousand bucks and they fucking sold at an auction for like $11 million. (laughs) 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 Fucking got him again. (laughs) Dude, some people just aren't supposed to be rich, I guess. And he's right. one of them. Right. Like, dude. He, he, <laughs> he said he, sold, he, he, he said, yeah, I ain't getting fooled, motherfucker. Give me a G. <laughs> Reporter said, all right, here's a G. <laughs> Took these original documents and went and sold them. That's crazy. For 11 mil. <laughs> so he right. sold his Apple stock for like 15 grand, which is like $300 billion worth. Right. And then he sold the fucking only thing he had left for a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth 11 million. Yeah. That's crazy. What do you what do you what do you think of that? That's man. If he had a brain, he'd be dangerous. Oh. Well he lives in fucking Pahrump, bro. That's go crazy. go hook up with him. <laughs> Not go hook up with him. <laughs> well, Jonathan Dawson told you come hook up with me. So next thing you know, I'm like, you you email me or you DM me and you say, What'd you say? You need a door to door comedian? Or what did I say? Hi, you need a door to door comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, has anyone ever answered like that? Heck, you know, I said, oh, yeah. I said, this is a good one right here. <laughs> this is right up my alley. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, if you came to my door, we would have fucking, that that video would have been even more viral. <laughs> right. But, 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 yeah, like, I didn't know who, who, who you were. Like, the, 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 the handle, by the way, folks, if you guys want to follow him, catch up to him, because he's been doing a lot of shit since then. That was back in 2012. Yeah, it's 19, with- dude. Motherfuckers got TV shows, training companies. I guarantee you, dude, you're gonna get a a team around you that's gonna build this thing up. And we ain't seen the last of old Kenny Brooks. But um, if you guys want to follow him, you go to at K B for Kenny Brooks, and then comedian. Like, you want to be a stand up or something? Yeah. Oh, is that what you want to do? Like, if you mm-hmm. if I if you said, dude, I want to do anything I can. What do I what you want to be? A comedian? No, nah, being like movies. You like, so you want to be an yeah, actor? I can be like a salesman. We could do like a Wolf of Wall Street two or somewhere like Boiler Room two. Is Jordan like, Belfort a good a good? Yeah, good, I like him. Dude, go get on his podcast. Right. You want right. me to call him for you? <laughs> huh? <laughs> That'd be cool. I'll get you on old JB's podcast. I'll right. bet you anything he would do it. Right. You want me to call him? You can. You want me to? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. I, I actually I'll call him offline because if because if he says no online, you look dumb. <laughs> And if he say, and if he says anything but yes, I'll look dumb. <laughs> right, right. So I'll call him offline because dude, he might say who. All right. I'll be like, you know, he'll be like, I don't remember. All right. How many views? A hundred million. I wonder if he knows. Like yeah. any salesman's probably seen that fucking video. Yeah. Did you see it, dude? I yeah, absolutely. Like before you ever even knew. Like you, I, like I didn't I know. Saw it back in 2011, 2012, when it was starting going viral, and I, I remember uh, being in a network marketing company. And being on uh, Facebook, and everybody was saying, "Man, imagine if you had him in your Whoa. organization. Imagine if, imagine if this guy was selling on your team. You know, if you could recruit somebody that found this guy." Imagine See that. again, dude. That's what I'm talking about, dude. You're missing the boat if you don't have number one an interactive online training platform. Seriously, right? You go in these studios right here. Mm-hmm. You create what you would have said in person, right? Because we've got interactive technology, and you create a course that's interactive, and now you sell that to companies to train their people and what's your turnover what's turnover in that industry 
huge. Right. So if I'm the company owner, I'm going to hire a thousand fucking people a year. You guys came and went, dude. Only the good ones stuck around. Yeah. And you know how many were good compared to bad? <laughs> So, dude, they had to train every fucking yeah, one of them people. exactly. And you know how they train it? Hey, go follow Kenny. Well, dude, that hurts you. If they could just be like, here's a password. I got Kenny Brooks to train every motherfucker on my team 24-7, track, measure, monitor all of it with repetition, testing, all of it. Dude, you could go get a 1,000 door-to-door companies to pay you, and I'll just make up a number, 100 bucks a month. It's 100 grand a month without doing anything. Right. But in reality, you'd get a lot more than that. And then those would lead to stages. Stages would lead to masterminds. Masterminds would lead to coaching, live coaching, consulting, live consulting. But if you want to be an actor and be in the movies, one way to do it would be go set up this training company on your brand so you make money every month without working. So now you, the real Kenny, Get your fucking ass to L.A. and start auditioning and meeting those people and building those relationships because this is the same thing, dude. You sell a bottle of fucking spray juice, whatever the shit that is. <laughs> right. you, you, you sell that the same way you sell yourself into a movie. Yeah. The movie business is either you got money or you know someone with the money. Mm-hmm. You're not Jewish. Right. I'm telling you right now, dude, in Hollywood, a lot of the Jewish community run the show. Right. So, dude, you got to get buddies with those people because nine times out of 10, it's who, you know, mm-hmm. but then, but then again, they're also, you know, who's going to sell tickets, right? They, they, they want money. That's why they, you know, <clears throat> they probably cast Kevin Hart, not you. Well, how they, how they get it to be you. You know why they cast Kevin Hart? Right. Cause he's fucking funny. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So he, so, so they're going to get Kevin Hart because everybody knows Kevin Hart sells tickets. Right. So, it's a tough business down there, dude. But I bet you that is exactly how you bust into that business is the same way. Right. You, you go down there, dude, and you don't take no for an answer, and you're positive, and you're hand glad, and you're shaking hands, and instead of selling the fucking juice, you're selling you. Right. So if you want to do that, that's the hard way to get rich, though, dude. Why you want to do that? <laughs> that's just always been my goal to be like. Uh, like well, then do what I do, because dude, that's always been my goal. If you listen to enough dropping bombs, I tell people I, when I started out, I was gonna be a movie star. Went down there, did all this bullshit, got, <laughs> came real fucking close, right? And then thought, well, I need to go be rich so I can pay for the movie, <laughs> right? Because if I pay for the movie, guess who's in charge? You, me. Exactly. I'll tell you who's playing what role, motherfucker. <laughs> right. And I'm and I got one eyeballed for me, right? <clears throat> but I just didn't think it would take all these years to get rich. Right. And so now I'm rich enough to make movies. Fuck, I'm busy working. I ain't got time to make fucking yeah, movies. I see. But one of these days, dude, I guarantee you in the next three to five years, right. I'm going to fucking take 10, 15 mil. I'm going to go make a movie <laughs> with my money. Right. I'll decide who's in it. I'll be in it. Right. And then, and then that will either become a very expensive souvenir or it will launch my acting career. Right. And I don't give a fuck which one. <laughs> but I will end up in a damn... Well, I am in several movies, but they're small parts. There's no way I right. could have got famous from it. Right. I'm going a, I'm to... A, I'm before I die, hopefully. Right. I'm going to fund a movie and have a big fucking part in it. So I'll end up, quote unquote, an actor. Right. I wanted to be a police officer and an actor. Right. And now I'm a motherfucking cop. Five <laughs> O. Swear to you. Honorary, that is but sworn officer of the law. I don't think it would have been cool if I was an officer of the law because I would have freaking probably ended up in jail or something with a badge and all that authority. Right. Like I'd have kicked a motherfucking door in, seen some dude sitting there with, you know, five kilos of cocaine and a million dollars cash. I'd have fucking wrestled him down, handcuffed his ass, fucking yanked him off the street went down to the jail, turned in the fucking eight ball and 10 grand I found him with. <laughs> the motherfucker had eight ball and 10 G's on him. <laughs> 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 then I probably would have got busted for fucking something stupid and ended up in prison and you don't want to be a cop in prison. All right. So have, do you ever think that maybe there's fate going on? Like I always wonder like <clears throat> a long time ago, a buddy of mine got in trouble for basically – white collar crime Uh so he got a felony had to go to fucking prison for fucking 12 months um put a house arrest on him well if you're a felon you can't have a gun right he believes 
that if, cause he had many, many guns hanging around before. And ultimately he believes that that happened. So he doesn't have all those guns laying around because his kids would have blown their heads off or, you know, whatever, something bad would have happened yeah, exactly. if, if God yeah. or the yeah. universe Mm-hmm. didn't do that to him. Right. That's a mindset. Yeah. That's that's a good positive way of looking yeah. at, hey, you got your right to have a gun taken away. Right. Well, I, it, may, it maybe it's for the better. My mm-hmm. kids would have killed themselves or I would have shot somebody. Right. Do you believe that? You believe that shit's possible? I do. So do you believe that maybe the girl dicked you over <laughs> on purpose? Like maybe it's, I don't really maybe think it was it supposed was to happen. Like, I, like I, that's why I think I think like everything happened for a reason. It was probably like supposed, cause like 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 even like the um, owner of the company, like the person that made like the cleaner. Dude, get up on that mic like oh. it's a penis. <laughs> now see, now see, look, he got closer to it. See, dude, if it was a penis, I'd have backed away. Like I would have went away from it. Why'd you get so close when I said get up I on there? I was already getting close before you said the penis. Bro. You funny. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny shit. <laughs> you funny. <clears throat> I did that to Damon John too. <laughs> right. I said, Damon, get up on there like it's a penis, and he <laughs> scoots up, and I'm like, dude, why, why are you getting close to it? <laughs> that was funny. You know why? You know why people get close when I say get up on there like it's a dick? Because all they're thinking about is they think they they're hearing what I want, which is get closer, mm-hmm. so it sounds all cooler. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not listening to what I'm saying, which right. is why they approach it. Because if you really think about it, get up on it like it's a dick. <laughs> well, dude, I'd, I'd go like this, right? I'd go fucking, whoa. All right. I wouldn't be like, yeah. All right. I'm not listening to what you're saying. All right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating what it is you want. All right. In a sales situation, that's not good. I call it not listening correctly or, right. or actively listening. Right. I have a like selective hearing, basically. Yeah, so I have a little thing that I teach salespeople. Like, I have a quarter, a dime, and a nickel. And mm-hmm. I say, now listen, Bob's mom has three kids. The first one is Nicholas, and then I show the nickel. And I said, the second one is Demetrius. I show him the dime. Mm-hmm. I go, what's the third one's name? And I hold up the quarter. What do you think they say? Cornelius. Well, they say all kinds of shit, but they don't say what his name is. Do you know what his name is? What? You don't know? Mm-mm. See what I mean? You ain't listening. Now, I'm, 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 I'm going to say it again, but I want you to listen close. <laughs> All right. Listen to me. All right. Quit, quit, quit trying to respond to me and just listen to me. All right. Okay. Bob's mom has three kids. The first one is Nicholas. The second one is Demetrius. What's the third one's name? What's the third one's name? So you're not listening. I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Bob's mom has three kids. Bob. That's right. Yeah. Now, see, if you was listening, listening, you did, first time I said, who's the third one? You just said Bob. Right. But you weren't listening. You were, you were, you were thinking on how to respond. Most people aren't listening to listen. They're to understand. They're listening to respond. Right. And when you're in sales, you knock on a door and you got the ability to listen and read between the lines. Like again, that lady had the tear. You knew something was wrong in her life. You knew there was there was something bigger going on than a bottle of fucking spray juice. Right. So you basically said something wise ass and funny, but not rude, and walked away, which caught her ear because I think you probably said Jesus. She was probably a Christian mm. at the end of the day, and you said Jesus. So so she listened. What what what'd you say? You know, and then you said, "Oh no no no," and then your personality broke the ice, and then it made her feel bad for being mean to you invited you in for whatever reason you saw the gun you mentioned it she says i was about to kill myself then what you didn't finish the story tell me what happened oh we just started talking like i just told her like how like why didn't she kill herself because you knocked on the door yeah like i like just like my personality like won her over she said it like she hugged me after that we were just i was just telling like my life story bottle anything yeah, she had got two bottles. She like bought two bottles. That's why I say I wasn't even looking for a sale. Like at the end, I was like, it's crazy. What was the average sale per house? Two bottles? Was your goal to sell two? No, it was like the sale really one. Like when I started, like, cause like when I first started, you only can get one sale out of a house. Like if you sell a case, that's only one sale. Like, cause we work off a sliding commission scale for like twenty five to fifty percent. So if you sell like a five hundred dollar case, you still only got one sale, but you would make like 
you you had to write 125 sales at the end of the week to make 50 percent so it was like you was making the company more money then like like the times changed after that then you can get as many sales as you want out of a house and then that's when i started selling like houses a lot of soap like i sell like one person like five bottles that's five sales but when i first started i was only just selling one bottle like be a sport tricord get rid of me special like i was just selling one bottle so after i bought a bottle how would you get me to upgrade to soap how how would I get you to upgrade? Yeah, like because you, you had to show one. You didn't say, right. "Hey, look at the soap. Look at the yeah. spray. Look at the this." Oh yeah, I'd be like, like when I when I sell you and you go get like if you pay cash, I just sell you one bottle. But if you about to do like a check or a credit card when you come back out, I'd be like, "Is you married? Yeah, well, don't divorce the product. See, these come together like butt cheeks. See, mom gonna be mad because you ain't get it the lavender because we made this last night. We upgraded like Beyonce. Then I just go into that. And then I tell them about the lavender. But like like if it's a guy, I'm gonna sell a guy like a citrus or a green apple because that's mainly like the heavy duty. That's like for the outside and like the cars and stuff like that like the driveway oil and grease and stuff and then if it's the lady i'm gonna do like the inside like carpet stains tile grout the kitchen bathroom so they buying like the lavender or the clear but nine times out of ten i usually sell like a package anyway like because i place like they better savings and then i'm like like i'm painting a picture and stuff like that like once i got them sold then that's when i just like like upsell them now how do you make money mostly right now just hustling here and there yeah just grinding like like speaking like doing funny skits and like um so if there's any producers or people that can control getting parts in movies that's what the motherfucker wants if you're in the bomb squad you can help a brother out call kenny and say dude i got a part for you if not dude where can they find you they can find you kb comedian on instagram where else you ain't got a website no, I'm working see, on it. See right what I'm now. talking about, dude? <laughs> yeah. Dude, you gotta you gotta you gotta turn yourself into a businessman, not right. a businessman. <laughs> right, right. Right now you're a businessman. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, you need a business man. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Website should be there right there. Mm-hmm. Boom. Now now I could have said, Hey dude, you guys want Candy come train your team live? You know, call him. He'll 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 book a day, come out and get your fucking team like pumped. You guys want him to speak at your corporate event? Get a hold of fucking Kenny, dude, or call his manager because, dude, Kenny, come out, get your motherfucking people thinking straight. The right, right PMA. You could give so many stories, and and then you just do the same shit you do at the door on stage. Mm-hmm. That's where it starts, dude. Everybody be like, God damn, dude, has he got a book or anything? Right. Yeah, I got a course. You got a course? Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, dude, you're making millions of dollars right. all on your brand, and then guess what you do? You bust down to Hollywood and say, go fuck yourself. I'm making my own damn movie. Right. And then you cast it and you just save yourself apart. And then when the movie comes out, if everyone loves you, guess what will happen? It's going to sell. No, you're going to get scripts and other offers from other people because you made yourself famous. That's my plan. And if it doesn't sell, like ain't nobody calling you kenny like dude <laughs> go back to your motherfucking training business right 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 because <laughs> because you come out in a big ass movie and don't nobody give a fuck <laughs> dude you tried dog like right. like good good for you you got yourself a souvenir now go sit down <laughs> you, you ain't an actor right right that's what i'm gonna do people i say never give up no there's some shit you should give up <laughs> hey, i've right. hired some salesmen they should just give that shit up right i've seen some actors that need to give that shit up right i've seen some singers that need to give that shit up Exactly. So you ever you ever hear the story "Never Give Up"? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I just heard it. Not. Yeah. Did you ever hear people tell you that? Yeah. I hear Dude, it you know how much time. information we get wrong growing up? Like, what were you taught growing up? Huh. Name something your dad or your mom always told you. Stay in school. Okay. See, stay in school. All right. Did you? Nope. Oh well. If you would have, wouldn't have helped you. He probably did. All right. You from a Cleaver family, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> What'd you do? Go to college and all that? I, I did a yeah. trimester of college. Yeah, but you stayed in school. No, I didn't. No, I mean, dude, <laughs> high school. I, I When'd you drop out? Huh? Like um, 12, the last year. You see, you didn't finish high school. Mm. See, neither did I. And, and I got people with degrees working for me. Why? Why? Because, dude, stay in school wasn't the answer. Right. What else they teach you? Um. What about hard work? Yeah. See, like, again, yeah. my dad hard work, dude. Hard work. Right. You, it looks like you've been working hard, dude. 50 fucking doors a day for how many years? Right. How's that working out for you? <laughs> it hard, was a learning experience. Hard, hard work ain't the answer, dude. Right. What else they teach you? You only got 24 hours in a day? Mm-hmm. Bullshit. Another motherfucking lie. <laughs> 
we've been taught wrong, dude. Right. Everybody's trying to figure out what to learn. Most people got to figure out what to unlearn to get to the next level. Right. So do you know that you got more than 24 hours in a day? No. You don't know that? Mm-mm. Oh my how you, god. How you got more than 24 hours? Oh my god, who did that? That's, <laughs> see, that's the same, that's the that's the same equivalent. It's like, oh my god, who didn't teach you? All right. What do you mean? How you got more than 24 though? Because I heard like Dude, that's you got 997, motherfucker. I'll sell you my course. No, <laughs> no just joking. But to tell you the truth, I'll tell you how. You ready? All right. Look, let's say you give him. 500 bucks and he'll give you 10 hours of his day and you give me 500 bucks now you got 10 hours of my day so you got my 10 his 10 your 24 how much hours you got 44 that's right you can do the math yeah now let me ask you another question what What if you had a thousand people that give you 10 hours a day how many hours you got dang how many hours you got a thousand people to get that's um 24,000 no a thousand people to give you 10 hours Oh, 10,000. They give you 10,000 plus you got how much of your own? 24. Now you got 10,000, 24 hours. Right. So how the fuck are you limited to 24 hours? <laughs> That's true. See, but but we're taught that. We only have 24 hours in a day. <laughs> Who the fuck said that? Right. They didn't teach us teach us right, dude. Yeah. That's why we're all struggling down here. They want us down here. Right. They don't want us up here. Otherwise our schools will be teaching us the shit we need to know. You know, at the end of the day, dude, our schools are teaching us to be average. Our schools, and then when we get out of high school and go to college, let's pretend we're all fancy and we went to college too. <laughs> dude, college is getting is giving you information from from books and people that never did shit. They just created or heard about shit and now they're teaching you about shit. Like Warren Buffett is an investor. Mm-hmm. Why ain't he teaching a motherfucking course? Right. Go to a college. It ain't Warren Buffett teaching you shit. <laughs> it's some dude reading Warren Buffett's books and right. shit, teaching right. you shit, which isn't bad, again. And and I'm not talking every school. I'm sure there are some experts that are now teaching mm-hmm. at, at the colleges. But in general, my friends go to college. They go to, uh, oh, I, they got a business management degree. They ain't managing no business. Oh, they're, they got a master's in fucking hotel management. Where do they work? <laughs> Oh, they work over at the fucking raceway. It's like what? Didn't you have? Uh, you, oh, oh, your your degree didn't mean shit. Right? Are you fucking kidding me? You went to school for four years to get a degree, and now you can't use it. Wow. Why is it? Why is it? Why is that happening? Do you know? Do you know? Oh yeah. Why? Because of the old paradigms that we're being taught that you know, go to school, get a good job. That's because back in the day, that is what you did. To get a good job. Well, this ain't that day anymore. Now you get a motherfucking Instagram account. Right. Now you get a motherfucking website. Now yeah. you fucking develop a product and you solve people's problems and you advertise the shit out of your abilities and then you motherfucking charge. That's what you do. And you yeah. already did it all, dude. Your motherfucking Kenny Brooks, best salesman ever. Like, I didn't know your name was Kenny Brooks till now, but. Look, dude, I knew you were the best salesman ever door to door. I seen that video. Everybody's seen that video. Right. And if they haven't, now they have, because you know how many people download dropping bombs per month? <laughs> 7.4 billion. There's like 16 kids in fucking East Zimbabwe that haven't heard of it. That's it. <laughs> so now everybody's going to hear about you, dog. Everybody. Right. I just wish I had somewhere to point them. Like, right. goddamn, you guys love Kenny? Right. You go over there to KennyBrooks.com. You ain't even got KennyBrooks.com. <laughs> you you ain't got a website. Mm-mm. Okay, see that pen in front of you? Yeah. Okay, write that down. Go get myself a website. Right. I, you can literally do that 10 minutes after you get off this podcast. If you're like, well, Kenny Brooks was taken. I don't give a fuck. Make something up like you did your Instagram handle. All right. Get yourself a website. Then when you start doing more and more podcasts, because I'll get you on old Jordan Belfort's podcast. I'll get you on some podcasts. Dude, when they say, what are you promoting? What do you want people to do? Say, dude, if I, I ain't promoting shit because I say the same shit when I get on stages. I don't really promote anything, but here's what I do. And if I can help you do something, I'd, I'd love to help you. Right. So, again, there's sales teams all over the world, dude, that if they got their team half as good of, uh, as what you do, they would make millions and millions more. And not to mention, 
all the people that quit and had babies at home mm-hmm. and had fucking problems and they didn't get to go knock on the door. They didn't get to sell the bottles. They didn't get to make the money. You know how many people lose to? Right. Mm-hmm. You're going to be helping all them. Right. Now, don't you feel like it's almost your obligation to help motherfuckers? Okay, so it's only 25 G <laughs> sign here, doll. Huh? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I could close your ass on a VT easy. <laughs> Do you, do you, last thing, do you think do you think the best salesmen are the biggest laydowns? Yeah, I always I always buy shit all the time. Yeah, and it's like everyone's like, "Oh, dude, I I sold you." I'm like, "Dude, the best salesmen are the biggest laydowns." Exactly. It's like we want to relate. And, but and, I'm be honest though, like you got to close them though, because like they like they respect. You got a, you got a particular way to close people. I got different ways, but like I like it's like I like I assume the sale and then like like. But could but if I said teach someone here how to close, do you, do you have it structured? Yep. Because if you don't, you better get a piece of paper out, dude. Go close the dough. Right. <laughs> close the dough and right. just sit there and think. Right. Like, dude, what is it I do? Because you got to break it down to where you can teach it, explain it, and let them practice it, and they'll get the same results you do or or like results. Right. I always tell people, dude, like results cause like action. You go to the gym, go like this with a weight eat the right food, your muscle goes like this. Mm-hmm. I go to the gym, <clears throat> eat that same food, and do that the same way you did that, I'll bet you my fucking muscle does the same thing. Exactly. Now, there's genetics and and, and and things that, like, you know, not always exactly the same. But, dude, people don't understand. Like action causes like results. Right. So if, if, if you taught me how to go door-to-door funny, motherfucking, I'll go door-to-door funny and have the same results you did. <laughs> Likely. Yeah. That's true. Now, can you teach that? Yeah, that's I've been teaching that. That's what's crazy. Like with the the company, like but you've been keeping it a secret. Like no, it's just how it's do people been a reach secret you in the door to door community? That's the only like because I like I, like I'll tell people. Listen, if you guys are interested in having motherfucking Mister Brooks come out to your organization to train, speak, or whatnot, you just hit me in the DM. <laughs> And I'll reach out to my dog and we'll negotiate a little number. All right. Or you can just fucking hit him up yourself at KB Comedian on Instagram. Tell him fucking Bomb Squad sent you and make your own deal. <laughs> All right. Now, listen, dude, It's this is one of the longest ones I ever did. So tell me, if you could start all over, there's three books that you would tell any salesperson to read. What would they be? Three sales books? Any sales book. Or any book. Um, Napoleon Hill, Law of Success. That's like one of my favorites right now I'm reading. Um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yep. By Dale Carnegie. And last is like Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Why sales? Because like, that, like I'm going to be honest, like besides actors and entertainers, the highest paid people in the world is sales. Because it ain't like no selling over your income. And like, like. The, I I love it. Like, and the number one thing for me to keep me going is that, like, I be like competing with myself and see, like, you know, it's like I I be seeing, like, especially if somebody turn me down, that like really fuel my fire. Be like, oh yeah, I, I this next person about to, I'm about he about to get it or she about to get it. So them books just keep me going because it's like a competition thing. Like I just be competing with myself. Like I ain't <clears> about <throat> to let this person turn me down. I ain't about so like just reading them books. It's just like inspiration, but it's motivation. But at the same time, I already like the learn like because I I know like my strategy and I know my gift and like my awareness. So them books is just like to me. That's that's what I learned like, and that's what like got me going. So them like my three favorite books that like helped my career out. Sorry. Folks, go pick up them books. If you don't know where to get them, go to Amazon. Hey, when you back in Vegas? Mm probably uh <laughs> whenever you needed yeah all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna keep in touch with kenny brooks have him back for another episode of dropping bizzles until then man go out share this podcast rate this podcast and make sure that uh you do me a favor and at least follow his ass on on instagram how many followers you got now like sixty-seven thousand. so so let's get let's get that fucking doubled up let's get you a blue fair bl- verified check mark let's get you freaking a website let's get you freaking training systems masterminds books let's <laughs> blow this motherfucker up huh all right can we do that yeah. and then come back when you're all big and famous <laughs> more, more big and famous all right and then let's talk about it exactly it might take you a month might take you a year all right 
Promise to come back? I promise. Cool. Until next time, kids, keep it real.